My guest tonight is from Punjab, Canada. No, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about someone much more fabulous, right? She's a, she's a poet, a performer, and was literally named Writer of the Decade. Yeah, casual flex. I'm talking about my very talented friend, Rupi Kaur. What's up, my sister? Hi, Lily. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? Look at you. Look at your setting all profesh, the flex of the books. You look epic. My, thank you. My team surprised me with this one day. I was like having a really bad day and they were like, okay, crying, we get it. Okay, cool. Can you just like come to the office? And I walked in and I was like, oh my God, my imposter syndrome. It's like going away a little after oh seeing all this. What a flex. I was having a bad day and then my team said, look at your three best selling, number one New York Times best selling books, babe. And then you ripped out the pages and dried your tears with the best selling pages. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm so happy you're on the show. This is long overdue since we talk all the time as friends, but now I get to I interview know. you as a, as a professional. And so the first thing I want to ask is you're in Canada and lockdown's pretty intense. And I hear you're quarantining with your parents. So like real talk, do you need me to break you up? <laughs> you know what? I feel like everybody wants me to say Yes, and I'm not gonna lie, when I when COVID started and I, I actually was just visiting them and then everybody was like, the government was like, we're shutting down. I had like 10 panic attacks because I was like, I need to go back to New York. Like, I'm not gonna survive here. And for some reason, it's been amazing. Wow. I think it's just like, I'm living with them as not a teenager anymore. So I get to be spoiled, but also I have the, um, I'm an adult and so they don't get to, you know what I mean? And so it's been really nice. And um, I haven't spent this much time in them with them since like high school. So it's been nice to get to like know them and have conversations with them as just people. But I'm not gonna lie, it's like hitting a, the year mark. And now I'm like, all right, things need to move along. Um, I get frustrated, but also very grateful because I mean, there's so many places I have it really bad. I mean, especially with what's happening in India this week. Um, COVID is far from over, so yeah, you know, it, just that's holding what, it together. That's exactly correct. Co COVID is so difficult for everyone, but it's also like a very stark reminder of our privilege, honestly, in a lot of places, so yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, that's dope. Well, listen, I, I know you as this, and most people in the entire galaxy know you as a very epic poet, as they should, but not a lot of people know that you actually got your... I guess your your career kind of skyrocketed in 2015 when you posted a picture that went pretty viral and it's a special picture because it's of your period. Is that right? Like tell me about that. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So it that was like five or six years ago. I don't Hold know. Pause one second. Um, Everyone but... at home that's cringing, all the dudes that are uncomfortable right now, welcome to a little late with Lily Singh where we talk about <laughs> things like this, okay? You will keep the channel here, you will stay right here and you will listen to this answer because that's what's up. Thank you. Proceed. <laughs> And so I, anyways, it was school project. I was taking, it was like my last year at the University of Waterloo. Anyways, I did this photo project on periods. That's what we were asked to do. Like talk about a taboo topic through anything visual. So I posted one of the photos on Instagram very naively thinking, you know, everybody's with the time. This is okay now, you know, cause like in my house, like my dad openly talks about my periods and like our periods in general, like he's a very, like these are just normal conversations. And so I've written about periods. I was like, this is no big deal, whatever. So I post this photo, it gets removed by Instagram twice. And I wake up one morning and it's like on the front page of the internet, every website, Reddit, Buzzfeed, like any website, anywhere, it was on the front page. And I felt frozen because suddenly out of nowhere you know i'm like 21 and hundreds and thousands of people are getting at me 50 percent of them love me for it they're like yo this is so dope like we should be talking about this it's important and the other 50 percent were like, coming from my life and sending me death threats and race threats and i was just like oh my god all of this over a period something that half of the world deals with once a month wow and i want to read the caption yeah. you wrote with it because it's in true Rupi Kaur style epic, it is their patriarchy is leaking, their misogyny is leaking, we will not be censored. I mean, I'm finally like not, not that I was embarrassed of it. I feel like for so long I didn't want to become like the period girl. Right. And so I avoided talking about it. But now I'm like, yo, this is really cool because it, it just started so many wicked conversations. Um, Absolutely. And it's been 
Yeah. And yeah. now we're having a conversation <laughs> with periods on late late television. That's what you did. You did that. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so from that point, fast forward, each of your poetry collections have hit number one. Not two, not three, number one on the New York Times bestselling list. Congratulations, I'm so proud of you. It's Thank epic, you. but you Thank write about you. things like, you know, uh, trauma, heartbreak, race, womanhood. Does writing about all of this stuff, I guess the question I wanna ask is, does it feel therapeutic or does it make you feel like you need more therapy? <laughs> okay. Writing about it and sharing about it, writing about it, it feels very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Sharing it and having conversations and performing it, very much like therapy. What makes me feel like I need therapy is like all of the access people have to then just think that their opinion is like something that you should listen to. Right. Um, <laughs> and you know, you know exactly what that's like. Um, but while I'm writing it, it's so it's gratifying it's healing it's so many things i'm like oh my god i can't wait to share this with my people just gotta wait for like two more years until the book is out but it'll be worth it that's the difference between our worlds i'm like okay oh my god i worked so hard on this video it's gonna come out at 7 p.m by 8 p.m i'll know if people like it you're like okay two years in the making gotta pick the book color the spine gotta do and you're very involved i know this but like for everyone watching at home you're very involved in every aspect of the book true or false mm -hmm. true i pick I do the entire book from picking the paper to making the cover to laying it all out and then I hand it to the publishers who they're amazing. They trust me and they're like, all right, do your thing and then they print it. So I feel like, and I feel like for artists like us, it's so important for us to have creative control and so I feel very lucky to have that with the publisher I'm at. Absolutely. Now you also write, like I said, a lot about heartbreak and relationships. Yeah. Real talk when we go, <laughs> real talk. Does, has anyone ever hit you up and been like, is this poem about me? Um, so I've been waiting for that, um, but no, but I've heard through the grapevine. So I call him my good ex and it'd be so funny if he watches this, but he, I heard from somebody that, he, yo, he's like going around telling people like I dated her, like she's my ex and he's like really proud of it. And then I was like, oh my God, Like, I don't know if you should be telling people this because I only write about my abusive toxic ex and I don't want people to think that's him. And um, so he, he's great, um, but I was afraid initially that, you know, this one person that I dated who was extremely abusive and toxic would, I was afraid, you know, I was afraid of like sharing these things and writing things, these things, but you know, publishing it, has been great because it sort of like turned the tables and given me my power back. And so that's been nice. And so nothing on that front yet, luckily. Okay. Well, I'll stand by if there's a poem that was like, one late night host that shall not be named that I was friends with. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for watching this clip. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more just like it. If you don't, none of us can leave set. Thanks!